welcome to our City Point Auckland online Easter experience. We're so excited to have you come and join us this evening. I'm Zara and I lead our online service team. And the service this evening may look a bit different, but I encourage you to invite your friends and family along to this live stream and also engage in the comments. We may not be together for the service, but we can still connect and engage together. And now I'm going to pass it to our location pastor, Pastor Ben, to introduce our Easter experience. Well, we are going to tell the Easter story. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of songs. There's going to be um, a message and items. And at the end of the service, there's going to be an opportunity if you'd like to receive prayer and receive Jesus into your life. But for now, we're going to start by having communion. Well, Jesus had been welcomed into the city as a hero. Now he and the disciples were gathered together to celebrate Passover, which they did every year together. But this Passover would be like none ever before. It would be known as the Last Supper. It was at this Last Supper where Jesus would clearly explain His purpose, His future, and what was about to come. He declared that this would be the last Passover meal that He would eat with them. And that this night, that the, pass, this, this night, the Passover, would no longer just be remembered as God's protection over the Israelites in Egypt hundreds of years before, but now it would be celebrated as Easter, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. He emphasises that from now on, when you eat and drink together, remember me, remember what I've done. Be in communion. This night would be the beginning of a new era, none like the world had ever seen before, and great things were at hand, but it wouldn't come without great sacrifice and great cost. And even as they talked amongst the dinner table at this celebration, the betrayer sat there, Judas, who had set all things in motion. In Matthew 26, verse 26 to 7, we read that while they were eating at the table, Jesus took bread and when He'd given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples. And He said, take and eat this. This is my body. And that's what that cracker that you have on top of that communion represents, the body of Jesus. Then He took a cup when He'd given thanks and He gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. You know, and that forgiveness, the forgiveness that Jesus offers is available for every person who would choose to receive it. It's available for you, friend. His grace is available no matter what you've done, no matter what kind of life you're living now, the grace of God is available for you. He knows you. He knows your heart. He knows who you are and He believes in you. He loves you and He offers hope. He knows the real pain that we walk through. He knows the real fears that you have. He knows the real challenges that you may experience in this life and He offers love, hope and forgiveness. And no person is ever a hopeless case to God. No person is ever too far or too unworthy for Him to reach. His love is perfect and it's available for everyone that would choose to receive it. His love is alive and His love is real. You may now eat the bread and drink the juice as we remember Jesus Christ on the cross. And why don't you just take a moment to say thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice for my life. Lord, I just thank you for the incredible sacrifice that you gave. Jesus, we're so grateful for your love for us. As your word says in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world, He so loved the people of the world that He sent Jesus, that whoever, whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but would have everlasting life. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, if we believe in Him, we wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. We thank You for that sacrifice. We thank You for Your blood that was shed and Your body that was broken. You took the punishment for us so we could be forgiven and be made righteous. We thank You for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I was standing shamefully in a courtroom, surrounded by demons on my left and angels on my right. Satan is the persecutor holding a million records about my life and God sitting on a throne with a mighty gavel in his hand. I had no lawyer. 
placed on trial for things such as lying, stealing, and fornication. For this was the beginning of my tribulation, for there was no reason to plead an innocent statement. But all the evidence was sitting right there with Satan. The demons smiled as tears rolled down the judge's eyes, for they clearly knew that now was the hour of my demise. But wait. In came a light, shining so bright, that the demon smiling suddenly jumped with fright. And the man that walked in that night was none other than Jesus Christ. Darkness departed to give way, and glory was all that the angels could say. As the man that walked in that night pulled out a lighter and immediately set Satan's records against me on fire. He took my case file and erased my name. Look me in the eye and said, my son, I'll take the blame. Handcuffs were placed on this man as he was thrown to the ground. The entire courtroom gasped at this horrendous sound, for suddenly ceased the beating of his heart. The man that had walked in glowing had now become dark. I did this to him. My lying, my stealing my cheating and he took my pain and spent three days in the hell that I was to go to for eternity I left the courtroom that day and there was nothing I could say for Christ had handled the debt that I was to pay this love is more than you can give to a girlfriend boyfriend husband or wife this man died for me I owe him my life and even though my life is not at all worth it how could you ever trade preferent for perfect See, I gave my life to Christ and suddenly picked up a mop. All that lying, cursing, cheating, all that had to stop. For my life had been bought. And it'd be a shame to sit there and do nothing but let it rot. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm not perfect. And the will to sin has not completely diminished from my life. But I believe Jesus' words when he died for me on that cross. It is finished. I know how you feel Fighting for another breath And searching for the strength your legs another step Help is on the way. 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 Help
on the way. Oh, yeah. Help is on the way. Well, not long after their meal together, they would go to the garden called Gethsemane, meaning a place of pressing. It was where the olives were squeezed and pressed to give up their treasure, their oil. God the Father was there, fully aware of the suffering His Son would endure, knowing the outcome would destroy the hold of darkness and make a way for salvation for all of humanity. Jesus prayed, Father, if You're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Jesus had always known that his destiny would be a rugged cross. Three nails, the conveying of man's sin and sickness upon him. But now it was imminent. He could feel its weight and its burden. The pressure was so great that in the place of pressing Gethsemane, that as he prayed, his precious treasure was being squeezed out of him. The blood of Jesus dripped out of him as as the Bible says the sweat was like drops of blood Jesus felt the weight of what he was about to do to be brutally murdered and crucified for the sake of mankind it's very possible to have drops of blood in your sweat if you're going through extreme anguish or sorrow and we read in Matthew 26 verse 38 Jesus said my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow even to the point of death I think this also gives us tremendous hope that Jesus hasn't remained distant from all kinds of human suffering, from grief, from sorrow, from pain, from anxious feelings perhaps that we have. He, didn't bec- he hasn't remained distant but has become part of it, not only physically but emotionally and mentally. See, because while life is beautiful, you will experience grief and sorrow just as Jesus did. And it's okay that you're feeling like that. You don't have to feel shame or guilt. Jesus loves you and there is hope for a better tomorrow. Jesus felt sorrow, He experienced it, but He still had victory over it and went to the cross and died for you. And you too can have victory over the struggles and battles that you face, knowing full well that Jesus gets you. He sees you and He gives you His grace to overcome. Or moments later, while they were in the garden, as they were praying, Judas points Jesus out to the soldiers and he was betrayed by the kiss of a friend. In the next few days, Jesus would be sent from judge to judge, from trial to trial, yet none could find anything wrong in him. An innocent man, no wrong was found. The Roman governor Pontius Pilate, knowing him to be innocent, tried to save him by offering an exchange the people could choose to free Barabbas, a convicted murderer, or Jesus, an innocent man. But the religious leaders persuaded the crowd and they called out, free Barabbas, free Barabbas. Pilate said, what should I do with Jesus? The crowd yelled, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate responds, I have nothing to do with this matter. I'm innocent of this man's blood. He is a just man, the crowd yelled, but the blood be on us and on our children. Jesus is taken away, whipped, beaten, a crown of thorns pressed on his head. Barabbas is set free and Jesus is then prepared for crucifixion. And carrying his own cross, he was taken to a hill known as the place of a skull. The crowd that once waved palm leaves in honour of him had now thrown insults, spat on him and mocked him. The Creator was nailed to the cross by his creation. At any moment, he could have exercised his power and broken free, but he knew it had to be done. It wasn't the nails or the strength of the soldiers that held him to the cross. It was his love for you and me. Just as we desire justice in an earthly court system for those who have broken the laws of New Zealand, so God requires justice for all those that have broken his law who have sinned and done wrong, which is all of us, not one person is perfect. The Bible says that the consequences of our sin is death, to be eternally separated and isolated from God. But not only does God give justice, He also gives grace. You see, justice is getting what you deserve. 
but grace is getting better than what you deserve. It's getting what you don't deserve. And so therefore, Jesus, as innocent and perfect, trades His life for ours. He takes the consequences for our sin and dies upon a cross so that we would be forgiven and that now we could have an intimate relationship with God from now and for all of eternity. He loved us so much. He didn't want to do life without us. He didn't want to leave us alone in our struggle, but wanted to come and be with us and live among us, experience all the different uh, pain and, and, and temptations and struggles that we have, yet be innocent, yet stand in victory and die upon a cross that we would be saved. God's grace is stronger than any hurt, than any guilt, than any pain, than any sin or wrong you could ever do. His grace is available and His grace displayed through the cross is more than enough to forgive you and make you free and whole again.
Jesus died, He declared it is finished. Not only had His mission be accomplished, but the price for our sins had been paid in full. But the death of Jesus was like no other. It says that the sun refused to shine from 12 p.m. till 3 p.m. as darkness covered the earth. When He died, there was an earthquake. Bodies from the grave came back to life and the curtain of the temple was suddenly torn in two. When He died, the earth... The earth responded so dramatically that the very people that crucified Him looked and said, surely this was the Messiah, the Son of God. They buried Him in the tomb like a seed. He was buried into the ground, appeared to be lost. It appeared like their Savior was no more. The devil thought He'd won. The disciples thought it was over. The people thought they'd lost their Savior. But Jesus wasn't buried into the ground, lost, forgotten. Three days later, He rose up from the grave because Satan couldn't beat Him. Death couldn't hold Him. The grave couldn't keep Him. Darkness couldn't overcome Him. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He's alive and He visited over 500 people after His resurrection with scars in His hands and feet. He had power over sin, death, and the grave. And He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is real today, He is alive today, and He is your answer. Not only is Jesus spoken of in the writings of the Bible, He's found in Jewish writings, in Muslim writings, and in multiple letters from first century historians who speak about His crucifixion, His teaching, and His spread, and the spread of Christianity. What started as a small group of 12 men grew rapidly to 7.5 million by the fourth century, and now two and a half billion people globally claim to be a Christian. Jesus coming to earth wasn't just a nice fairy tale story like the Easter Bunny. Jesus coming and dying on the cross is a historical fact that changed the world then and still changes the world and people today. Buddha never said he was God. Muhammad never said he was God. Confucius never said he was God. Only Jesus declared that he is God and showed us who he truly was by his miracles, his teaching, and his love for humanity and His incredible power over sin and death. But who is Jesus to you? Is He just a good man? Is He a wise teacher, a miracle worker? I've come to know that Jesus really is God. That He is the one that loves you endlessly. He is your Savior and the one that can truly change your life for the better, forgive you of everything, and give your life a whole new meaning and purpose. 
1993 at a very young age, I put my hand up in a moment like this and made a decision to follow Jesus. And as I've grown older, I've come to know the power of that decision, the joy that I feel, the purpose that I have in my life and the amazing privilege of being in a real relationship with God. We have a whole bunch of people in our church that in a moment just like this, have said yes to Jesus. They've opened up their heart and they've experienced the love and grace of God that has brought about life change for the better. And I'm sure there'll be a bunch of people in this room that in hearing the Easter story of the death and resurrection of Christ, that it spoke to you in such a way that you too have realized your need for God and today you wanna open up your heart. Because you know what? Every person one day is gonna die. And what determines us getting to heaven is not whether you've been a good person or not. It's, not. it's not the Santa Christmas list, the naughty list and the nice list. It's not about whether you've been a good person or not. It's about have you received Jesus? He is the free ticket. He is the only way to heaven. I believe that inside every person's heart is a God-shaped hole. Until that hole is filled, we can try and fill it to find satisfaction and meaning in life. We can try and fill it with social, endless social media scrolling. We can try and fill that void inside. We can try and fill that emptiness by buying lots of things to make, us ha- to make us happy. We can try and pursue wealth to fill that hole or people's approval or popularity or status or achievements and the list goes on. But only Jesus can fill that hole. You see, in life, we can get holes in our heart too. Because as beautiful as life is, it can also have ugly moments. People that were abandoned by their parent, people that were abused, people that have been through incredible trauma and grief. And you can search for all different things. If I have this substance, then that'll fix it. But it only provides temporary relief, but it doesn't actually heal the heart. Or if I have this achievement, or if I get this, then I'll be fulfilled and happy and full of joy. But it is only Jesus. He is the missing piece to the puzzle in your life. And when you have that peace, when you receive Christ, there's an incredible hope and joy and purpose that you'll find. And so in a moment, I'm about to pray a prayer for people across this place to make their first step in coming towards God. It's just the first step. doesn't mean it's the end. It's just the first step. And saying, yeah, would you include me in that prayer? I wanna receive Jesus today. And so what I'm gonna do is in a moment, we're gonna bow our heads, close our eyes, and I'm gonna ask if people wanna receive Jesus just to pop up their hand. And the hand is just really showing what's going on in their heart. They wanna receive Jesus today. And so right now, why don't we just bow our heads and close our eyes. If you wanna say yes to Jesus and be included in this prayer, I'm just simply gonna count to three. And on three, if you're like, yep, I I, I wanna say yes, I wanna receive Jesus into my life, you can just raise your hand and, and then you can pop it back down. And so if you wanna say yes to Jesus on the count of three, one, Jesus loves you. He has a great plan for your life. Two, nothing in this life will satisfy that emptiness, only Jesus. Three, raise it up high if you wanna say yes to Jesus today. Awesome, we're gonna pray this prayer together as a, as a family. I'm gonna say this, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me endlessly. I say yes today and I open my life to you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I turn away from my sin and I ask you to come into my life to forgive me and make yourself real to me. Today I decide to follow you. Amen. If you made a decision this evening, we want to say congratulations. This is the best decision you will ever make and is the first step in a lifetime journey with God. We want to get alongside you here at City Point and help you along your journey in taking your next steps. In the chat, the host team are about to put a link about I have decided to follow Jesus. Please click the link. Otherwise, please text your name and decision to the number on the screen as we would love to get in contact with you this week and help you out on your journey. Be still, calm this soul. I need you here now. Restore my hope, and I confess I've been afraid. Remind my heart, Lord. increase my. Faith.
to celebrate all the decisions been made today. We would love to know what you got out of this experience. What was your favorite item or what did God speak to you about in the service? Drop it down in the comments. And while you do, here at City Point, we believe generosity is in the heart of the believer. Before I hand it to Pastor Ben to talk about giving, we have two ways you can give online. Either you can click the link that's going to be put in the chat by the host team, or you can text City Point 2818. Uh, in 1 John 4 verse 19, it says, we love because He first loved us. We love other people. We be gracious and kind and love others because He first loved us. Because He loves me, I can love other people. You know what I've found is your capacity to love somebody else is determined by your, your understanding of how much you are loved. You know what I've found in life is hurt people hurt people. Best thing you can do for your relationship or family is to be whole, to realize how much you're loved and then give that love on to other people. The scripture says that when I understand how much I'm loved and cherished by God, I can truly love other people with an unconditional, pure love. 
When I think around our giving today, we give because God first gave to us. Jesus first gave up everything. He gave His life for us. And as we give today, let it be over a heart of gratitude for all that Christ has done, for He has been so good to us. Some of you may want to give a special gift to God this Easter. Others, regular tithes, or maybe you're new here. There's no pressure. This is a free will offering. We're just so grateful to have you here in the service today. But churches can only run by the generosity of people. And we're grateful for all those that continue to sow and give into the things of God. Why don't I pray? Lord, I just thank you today. We come to give and sow. We thank you for the incredible sacrifice that you gave for us, that we would be saved, forgiven, healed. And so, Lord, I just, we come with a heart of gratitude to give. And I just pray your blessing over every person. Maybe people here that are doing it tough right now financially. Lord, I I just pray that you would make a way. We thank you for that. Bless every person and family here in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, to give, you can either click the link in the chat or you can text City Points 818. Here at City Point, we are a family and would love you to join us. You can do that by either clicking the link that the host team are going to put in the chat or you can text the number on the screen, your name and connect. And we'd love to contact you this week and get you connected and join the family. We're so glad you joined us for our Easter experience this evening. And now I'm gonna hand it back to our creative team to end off our Easter experience with a song to celebrate how we've been changed by Jesus. And let me tell you all my friends about this joy I'm living in. Let me take the mic, go on and testify how I was dead and then I came to life. No more living in the dark of night. Now everything's alright. I've been changed. I've been saved. Brand new Heartbreak fades away like a book when you turn the page. Let me take the mic, go on and testify how I was dead and then I came to life. No more living in the dark of night. Now everything's alright. I've been changed. I've been saved. Put my hands in the air cause you heard my prayer A transformation radical I put my hands in the air cause I know you're there I know it's supernatural I put my hands in the air cause you heard my prayer Ooh, I've been changed I've been saved Brand new day Tell me why would I turn back now? There's no end to the love I found. Future's bright and there ain't no doubt. I've been changed, I've been changed. And let me tell you now. Sunday.